Good morning, everybody. So, if you saw the thumbnail, you will see that we've got Taylor's E28 here in the workshop. We're gonna be doing some work to that today because if you've come from Taylor's video and you're new here, hello, I, uh, I do the automotive stuff. Uh, there's lots of junk cars here, including this Datsun Wagon rotary engine swap, my prelude on hydraulics, world's first Baghdami project, Barn Find Sierra, tickets still available, go grab some now before they sell out. And I have a lot more junk everywhere else as well. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, but let's get back to the E28. Now, if you don't know, this car has an awesome story with it. It's pretty spicy. It's got a lovely interior. It's got a spicy engine, spicy mayo. And it's mainly here so I could do some welding to the seals and the back edge of the seals and the floor edge repair, the chassis rails, the battery tray, the... Yeah, it's quite a lot. So that little bit of corrosion that I should have done in half an hour should be done by the end of the day. And Taylor, you can come pick it up, but... Now to do the hardest bit of this repair, I'm gonna have to drop the subframe out the bottom and there's a lot of repairs behind the subframe mounting points just on the back edge of the seal where you can't get a grinder in. Gonna drop the subframe, get it on the ramp today. Before we do that, I've got to strip the interior out because we've got to do some repairs to the floor edge, uh, just where the seal buttons up to it. Because if you see in Taylor's video, it's actually separating in, the, in between the two seams. And yeah, I don't think I wanna put Taylor through another mental breakdown with another fire, so. Yeah, we'll rip that out beforehand. I'm not gonna bore you with the uh, removal of the interior, so YouTube magic. Seats removed, carpet pulled back. Seems okay in there. There is a bit of rot down there as well on the inner seal. That's what I was talking about, that floor edge. That's exactly where it's split apart. So we'll have to basically cut a bit of the floor out here, come out all the way down here and just fix that little area here. But the rest of it on the inside, looks decent it was just here both sides and this side has had a repair on that floor edge right here so yeah that one's already been done that one's pretty decent we'll just clean up the underneath and see what it looks like but we could be okay there now let's go on the ramp and get the subframe out As you just saw there, I managed to get the wrist up frame out. Uh, that was an absolute pain. It did not want to come out. Everything was seized. I assumed that I could put on time lapse and it would be fine, but turns out that this subframe and everything on it didn't want to come off because it was all seized. But it's off now and we can get access to the back of the seals and oh wow, it's, uh, it's a bit sore. The, uh, yeah, it's crusty a bit like everywhere. Plan of action now, tidy up, pick all my tools up, organize all these bolts so I don't lose any of them, and then get the wire wheel out and just start going ham on all of the areas around the rust so we can see how far it spreads, which is uh, quite a lot, quite a lot. Oh, there's a little E21 we've had delivered today. Uh, yeah, if, you're, if you know rust, you'll know rust, but if you don't, anything that is orange, like or brown, it has to come out. Like it will not go away. You can't really weld to it. It's never gonna just disappear. And you get into this little rut where it just, this little hole here ends up being the whole side of the car. But how far does it go? So my plan now, get the wire wheel on, get this all cleaned up into metal or what's left of it. And then we'll have another look and assess the damage. We'll grind back the outside and then inside this wing here and just, yeah, just get it all into metal. Because at the minute, it looks very scary. And I can probably say that's true.
Yeah, as I thought, none of this is any good. That is, uh, well, questionable. Whoever did this repair here, wow. That was clearly no good. This panel here, this bit is good. This bit here. The rest of it, it all needs to come out because I guarantee, and the back side of it, which you can't really see, it'll be corroded from the inside out. So what you can see out here doesn't mean it's necessarily good because the surface rust and pitting follows it all the way up here to the back of the panel. So as soon as you go to weld it, it will blow a hole because it's so rotten and thin from the inside. But on the outside, it will look like it's good, which it 100% isn't. And then here, uh, obviously no good. It's obviously pitted on the outer edge here. This is what I'm saying, that bit there, Yes, you could sand it back and paint it, but it will always come back to bite you. Bit here, obviously that needs repair, up to about here, all the way down. And that bit needs to repair up to here, all the way down. And then once you take that out, there's probably rot behind it, which is even more. And then it, 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 it grows, it grows. So then you get to the outside and you can see here again, it's all like RTV and silicon. It's not very good. The outside skin, which is obviously rotten here, it will be rotten all the way down the back of there on the inside. So you basically just cut it all off and you start all the way up here and just cut all that out. And uh, yeah, start again with all that. The higher you go with the cut, the better. Get it as far away from this pitting as possible. So all the way up here and then you're good. This is how things quickly turn into a can of worms. <laughs> Again, same story, horrendous repair here. And you can see this one, it actually spreads into the floor of the boot floor, I wanna say, I don't know what you wanna call it. But yeah, that actually spreads into there and that obviously spreads into the inner arch as well. There's obviously all those packing peanuts or something in there. So you have to replace this section on the inside here. This section here, I'm not quite sure if this square is open on the, no, it definitely isn't. So yeah, that bit there, obviously again, that bit there, that bit there, yeah, a lot. So yeah, they're very bad. The subframe mounts are notorious for rusting and this is horrendous. Now we definitely need to pull all this awful repair out and repair it. And yeah, otherwise the subframe is gonna rip out the bottom of the car. Which I'm surprised it hasn't, to be fair. And definitely if Taylor wants to put a turbo in it or something else a bit faster, because I know he wants a little bit more power in it, that isn't going gonna to do anyone any favours. So. I'm going to do a lot more grinding and get a lot more stuff into metal and we'll see where we stand. I've already done a little bit more on this area here. Mainly on the outside as well, the outer skin on the seal, underneath here, that sort of problem follows throughout the whole seal. So there's a lot of time grinding in here. So I'm going to get a lot of this into metal and uh, yeah, let's have a look in a minute, shall we? That's no good. This whole edge needs to be repaired. As you can see, the separation, it's pretty bad. The floor edge, pretty much the whole entire way is gonna need replacing. That's no good. There's also a little hole just there as well. It's just disappeared, it's not even there.
just a bit of investigation, right? Obviously, this has been repaired and I've talked about it already. However, now going in a bit deeper, you can see all these little scratchy lines here, like there. These are grinding marks from where they was grinding this area beforehand. So that's where you've got to be careful because obviously they've ground it all down, right? Imagine this panel started off as 0.9 thickness, right? They've ground it down uh, and then that takes like 0.3 of a mil off the top of this metal here. So now there's 0.6 metal there. Uh, and on the back side, it's probably rotten. So then it's like 0.4 metal. So when you go to weld it, these little grinding marks and the fact that it's gonna be rusty on the inside, that makes it almost impossible. So you need to come further back down here where it's not been ground out to give yourself a better chance of actually being able to weld it properly. Because like I said before, it looks shiny, but it won't be good on the backside. And that is just the case for everything on this car. Yeah, we're gonna try and dissect this area and see how bad it goes. Cause that's where it gets tricky. Cause the internal structure that holds this mountain point, that looks like it's already rotten. So we need it to be strong. So that's absolutely covered in it. The underside of Taylor's BMW, what's there of it is now on me. And Maybe at some point we'll actually put some fresh metal in, but until we get to, you know, the deep depths of this area, we can't put any metal back in it. So we need to start, start with the hard bit and then work our way forward. there to be a little bit of rust but not the entire subframe mounting missing that was what was holding the subframe in the car so that is less than ideal all cars from like 70s 80s 90s they've rust from the inside out and they're a massive problem for splitting in between seams and stuff like you see down the side of this seal just inside uh, the crevices where you can't see, that's where they will rust first. They'll come through any little channel and whatnot, through door seals and uh, sunroofs and all that sort of stuff. They'll find, that water will find its way in and they will rot themselves from the inside out. And that's pretty much every single car. It's not just E28s, it's pretty much every single car from 70s, 80s and 90s that will just happen. So if you see a bit of surface rust on the outside, it's gonna be absolutely fucked on the inside. There's no, there's no question about it. I've yet to find a car that's like decent on the inside compared to the outside. You know what I mean? Like that's just how it is, and that's how all these cars are. And uh, sometimes they surprise you even more than you actually bargained for. So I'm gonna cut the other repair out of that subframe um, on the passenger side, and we'll have a little look then as well, shall we? Once again, extremely rusty. To repair this, you've got to go up here, basically. Anything that's brown, get rid of it. Up here, around here, and all the way around there. This is, without a doubt, 10 times worse than anyone imagined. However, it is all fixable. Um, I just got to speak to Taylor today and see what he says, because I don't think he knows it's this bad. <laughs> I've rung him. Uh, I think he's absolutely mortified. I've been on the phone for 20 minutes and he said, I'm going to call you back. So I think he's gone to have a big cry because his car is absolutely destroyed. But, you know, uh, from this point, obviously the car still needs to be done. Like the car needs to go back on the road. The story with it, it still needs to, still needs to carry on. We need to put it back on the road. We've said that we're going to do something on the internet, so we need to do it. So, yeah. Let's uh, start trying to fix these subframe repair mounts because we can't buy any panels. We've had a look. Uh, we can't buy any panels, so let's try and start fixing that area. After much, much cutting, I'm nearly at a place where I can start putting metal in. Ugh. Basically, 
I'm going to try and trace this area here uh, and then get it to fit over it and then cut it out and then I'll obviously weld it in situ and then from there I can literally rebuild everything which is a bit of a pain but you know it is what it is um, yeah this is what a little bit of surface rust looks like after someone has to start fixing it this is what it gets back to so if you see surface rust walk away And now, when you get to this point, you can start putting metal back in. But before we get welding again, we've got to protect all the inside of this panel and then also all the edges in and around this area. Uh, we'll use weld through primer, which is the copper stuff. You may have seen it before, but give that a spray in there and then we'll get this in there. It's not quite perfect fit, so I've got to weld it, tap it, weld it, maybe trim it a little bit more as I go. But we've got to start from somewhere and this is a very awkward shape to make and get in there, so. I'll get amongst it. And that is pretty much all I've got time for today. So this video needs to be uploaded in about three and a half hours and I have not yet finished editing it. But yeah, as you just saw, first part of the subframe has been fixed. I've got to obviously do the outside patch. I'm not quite sure how much I'll film of it because you know, it's a bit repetitive, although it depends how many people want to see it. Um, we'll see how, how this video goes and uh, maybe I'll do some more repairs on video. But yeah, rust repair is so awkward to film because your phone gets covered in crap. Well, my phone does. I do everything on my phone, so film, edit, like upload everything on my phone. So when it's getting covered in crap by the grinder and like sparks are flying at it, I'm quite hesitant to let it be any closer than it is. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, if you're new here, thanks for watching. If you're a regular, remember the Sierra giveaway is live. Tickets are selling really well. Got the meet next month, 16th of March. I'll put the poster up here. Now, please come to that. It's free to enter. Um, you can come and have a beer, chat, 
gonna be lots of cool cars there so i do appreciate if you'll come and also that's where we'll be drawing the sierra who uh, who wins it basically so yeah buy your tickets you can buy your tickets up until that date and then hopefully if you come to the meet you might be driving home in the sierra so yeah so, yeah thanks very much for watching subscribe to the channel like it do all that sort of stuff and uh i'll see you in the next one thank you very much